So if buoyancy is not going to allow us to have a flying car, how could we do it? Well, the most common way to fly is by pushing something down, typically the air around you. So let's see if this technique can work for a flying car. Let's have some examples. One example might be a helicopter. So here's our helicopter. There's its tail, its legs, windscreen. And what it's got is a bunch of rotor blades. And as they spin round, they push air down. As they are pushing the air down, they're accelerating the air. The air to begin with is not moving down. Afterwards, it is moving down, so it's accelerated. If you're going to accelerate anything, you need to apply a force to it. If your helicopter is applying a force to the air, by Newton's third law, the air must apply an equal and opposite force to the helicopter. And that's what keeps the helicopter up. That's pushing air down. Another possibility would be, let's say you've got a superhero with a rocket pack. In this case, what you might be doing is pushing the rocket exhaust downwards. So once again, as you're accelerating the rocket exhaust, it goes downwards, accelerates downwards, therefore there must be an equal and opposite upward force that holds you in the air. And this is actually what applies to aircraft. So let's imagine we have an aeroplane. And it's got wings. Now what happens here is that, as seen from the aeroplane, the wind rushes past and is deflected at an angle downwards by the wings. Of course, the air that's further away is not deflected. But nonetheless, it means that air that was travelling horizontal with respect to the aircraft is now going downwards. So once again, you're accelerating air downwards. Therefore, there must be an equal and opposite force pushing upwards that holds the wing and hence the plane in the air. Now, some of you may know that this explanation for how planes fly is not the one often taught in school. In school, a wrong explanation is often shown. The idea here is that a wing is curved at the top and flat at the bottom. Then as the air flows past, it has to go faster over the top to reach the other end than it does at the bottom. And there's a thing called Bernoulli's law that says if a fluid is moving faster, its pressure must be lower, therefore it pushes it all up. But this isn't true, uh, at least not most of the truth. Wings are shaped like this, more or less, they don't have to be. But why does the air over the top have to reach the end at the same time as the air that goes to the bottom? In fact, experiment shows that it doesn't. The air that goes over the top of the wing arrives at the back later than the air that goes under the bottom. So the whole idea that it has to go faster over the top is not true. And also, if you've ever been to an air show, you'd often see that planes can fly upside down, which would be completely impossible with something like this. And also, not all planes have the bulge top and the flat bottom. Some have other shapes, and they can still fly. So that theory while all very nice, is actually not true. The correct way to think about how an aircraft flies is that the wing is a device for directing air at an angle downwards. You're therefore accelerating air downwards. Therefore, there must be an equal opposite upwards force. So this is looking more plausible. So our flying car might look something like uh, the one in many science fiction movies. Uh, I'm thinking uh, Back to the Future or... Uh, avatar where you've got your car maybe with some fans on each corner and the fans suck in air from the top and blow air out at the bottom and that keeps the car up so let's try and work out in the next video whether this is actually a feasible way to make a flying car